Hello, and welcome back to the How to Use Famitracker video series. This lesson will focus on the noise channel and all the amazing things that you can do with it. The noise channel specializes in atonal bursts of static that usually contribute rhythmic, percussive, or sound effects to your project. Now, it's important to note that the noise channel actually functions a little differently than the pulse and triangle channels, because rather than having a 12-tone melodic scale, the noise channel actually uses the 16 hexadecimal values, the 0 through F, that we talked about in the last lesson. Now, these notes trigger various tones of noise from low rumbles to high hisses. You can kind of think of it like a bandpass filter, um, focusing on 16 parts of the frequency spectrum. It's important to keep in mind because inputting notes can be a little confusing on the noise channel because its scale has 16 notes rather than 12 for a normal melodic scale. Um, however, like the pulse and triangle channels, the notes that are triggered inside the noise channel will play indefinitely until you either turn them off or another note is triggered. In addition to that, um, the noise channel does take any instruments that you have created up in the instrument editor up here. So if you have a specific volume envelope or you want to mess around with something weird and add like an arpeggiator, um, you can definitely do that. Okay, so let's build a simple one bar loop. So since we're just going to do one bar, I'm actually going to add a, um, a D effect over there. So we just have the one bar to work with. And now I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to find the one and we'll work with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a 1, which is a very low rumble, and um, put a fairly quick um, volume fade on it. So this is a basic kick-like sound in Famitracker. It's very distinctive. But what we can do after this is we can add a snare hit. And um, snares usually, I feel, kind of sit well in the middle, like between six, like between four and seven, really. So we can do a snare hit. Whoops, that's on the wrong area. And unlike a kick that has a very quick um, decay or a fade out, I'm going to have it a little bit slower fade out. So now we have this. Again, this is very, very simple loop just to kind of show how it works. Snares generally have a lot more character than the other percussive elements. Um, snares can be long, they can be high pitched, they can um, pitch up or down. Um, you know, they, there's a lot of um, variation that you can add to a snare to give it character and help um, set more of a tone inside your song. Um, so in the off beats, we can use high noise, which is up here and um, we can do a very quick fade out here and also note that I am using a little bit lower volume for the hats because um, it is a very high frequency and um, the computer kind of can render that at whatever um, tone volume you want but the ears recognize higher frequency is usually as louder so if it has a higher frequency you generally want to keep it um, a little bit lower volume so now we've got our loop it's very basic, but you know, it works for the, for the example. Um, so we can add something of a shuffle feel if you want, just by doing this. And then we can like create an open hat near the end. Just to, um, give it a little bit more feel and I'm going to lower the oops I'm going to yeah I'm going to lower the the decay on that. So now we have So it's a uh, it's something. So working in this way works really well, but it can get messy really fast. So what we can do is we can actually start creating instruments specifically for percussion. And this is really what I like to do. So I can create a new instrument and call it kick. And um, we can go in here and set the volume envelopes. Now, most volume envelopes for percussion have basically three different stages. It has the starting stage, which is very loud, which is often called the transient. And then there's a very quick decay. And then it has a long release. 
So basically it, it starts very loud and then it gets quiet very quickly and then there's this long fade out for it. And this is good because you get the transient, the, the very loud part, and that's what kind of def like helps your ear define what sound it is. So if the end part gets cut off by another note, then you're not really missing out on a whole lot of the instrument. So we have our kick here, which is very basic. And um, we can just go in here and um, replace our kick whoops, with an instrument like this. There we go. So, oh, right, I have the fade out. And that'll be fixed. I mean, this is another thing that you uh, want to always pay attention to your to your drums. So there we have that for now. So I like the sound of this kick better because it has a very fast fade out, but it still lingers rather than these where it's very strong all the time. So what we can do with the snare now is we can actually reuse the volume envelope from the kick because it's about the same. And what I like to do with the snare is I actually like to arpeggiate it just a little bit like this. And what this does is it gives the snare a lot more movement and just general feeling. So, oops, I'm going to make sure that these don't get in the way. And then... So in this case, this went up. I'm thinking about maybe, maybe pushing it down. That might help. Yeah, so... It, it gives it a very different tone whether you push it up or down, but I really like arpeggiating the, um, the snares. And when it comes to the hats, really it's just a very fast volume envelope. And um, so I'm going to create a new volume. I'm just going to set this to six and then just like that. And then we can go here, three, 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 three. Oops, one. So this is like the open hat sound. I want to, um, I want to have like the kick fade off rather than the hat. So now when we play this, it definitely feels punchier, and it has a lot more um, character to it. So another thing that I want to talk about when it comes to percussion is. Um, the the duty noise the the v channel or the v effect and um this can be used in the noise channel to create a very met metallic sound and it's really cool yeah so it's something that you don't always want to use for everything because it get, can get kind of grating but um there's definitely a lot of things you can do with that um Unlike the, the noise, the pulse width modulation that you can do in the pulse channels, there's really only V00 and V01 for this. There isn't like a 2-3 like in the pulse channels. So the other thing I want to talk about are crashes. And crash symbols are really cool. So I'm going to go back to our main instrument here that has no um, volume or arpeggio on it. And I'm just going to put in a nice note there. So what a crash generally does is it fades out fairly quick or fairly slowly and the um the tone wavers. So what what we can do with this, oops, we just need one. What we can do with this is we can have the fade out to like A01 or maybe A02 and then we can create a vibrato on it and this creates a really good crash sound. So we can increase the vibrato if we want. Oop. That's not what I wanted. There we go. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. And that's what a lot of people do when you want to simulate like ocean waves. You can have like this fade in over time and then fade out, which is always, which is always cool. So you can have this. So you can do a lot of cool stuff like that. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about for um, instrument effects or percussive effects in the noise channel are um, rolls. Like if you wanted to do a quick uh, rapid hat hit or a snare hit, 
Um, there is a way to do that, and it's a little bit of a hack, but I love doing it. Um, first, you have to make sure you're using an empty instrument without a volume envelope. And then after that, so I'm going to use the main channel here. And then uh, you just set it to arpeggiate, like zero, whoops, where am I? Zero, one, two. And what this will do is this will arpeggiate that one note very, very quickly. So it'll sound like a roll. However, you do want to make sure that you turn off that arpeggio in the next row. So if we go back to our prior example, it should work. Yeah. So I found this out a while ago, and it's really cool to play with because you can add these really quick note trills or rolls without having to go into like a new instrument and creating this big volume thing whoops big volume and going like up down up down up down and this doesn't always work as well but this this seems to work really well and i love doing it so this is a little bit of a shorter lesson but that does it for the noise channel um, it definitely adds a lot of versatility and character to your famitracker toolkit and i really really love playing with the noise and seeing what kind of crazy stuff I can get out of it. Uh, the next video will talk about letting the triangle channel work in tandem with the noise channel's drums. Um, as always, if you have any questions about this video, please get in touch with me through the YouTube comment section below or my Twitter handle that's above. Um, if you found this video informative, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel because I'm definitely going to be uploading a lot more stuff like this in the future. Uh, thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.